It's spring in Montana, and a place that's super cool to come in the spring is Freeze Out Lake Wildlife Management Area, a place where a ton of waterfowl migrate through every year. Growing up, I'd always come here swan hunting with my family. It's a permit that you have to put in for. You can draw a swan tag and you can come out here and shoot a tundra swan. So one of my favorite stories about growing up hunting here is we had this little Springer Spaniel named Ruger and he just loved birds. He would just sit and stare into the sky and whine and just watch all the birds flying by. We were out here hunting, super windy, just like today. And this guy next to us down the bank, probably 100 yards, he knocks down a snow goose. Wind's blowing it away from shore. He sends his black lab after it. Dog can't get it, can't get it. Ruger, our tiny little Springer Spaniel, is just locked in. He's just staring it down, wanting to go get this snow goose. And we're like, all right, knock yourself out. So we send him out there and he just starts barking. He's like, ruh, 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 just, just going after the snow goose. And eventually he just swims way the heck out there. He grabs the snow goose, brings it back. It's a super impressive retrieve. I walk over and bring the goose to the guy and he's like, wow, that's a, that's a really good dog. And we're like, yeah, yeah. A little while later, my dad knocks down a snow goose. Same exact thing. Falls way out there, starts blowing away. Ruger's locked onto it. We send him out there. He just starts barking again. Roof, roof. He grabs that snow goose and then he just keeps going. And he swims out to an island. <laughs> we have our binoculars and we're looking at him. He sits down on the island and then he just starts eating it and he eats the whole snow goose <laughs> just sitting out on the island and we can't do anything about it, which it's also hilarious because he has like the softest mouth of any dog. Like he never would chomp birds. He sits down, eats the whole snow goose. He's never done anything like that. He never did anything like that again after it. And uh, eventually he came back. We weren't very happy at the time, but looking back on it, it's hard to not think about that every time I come back here. Unfortunately, Ruger's no longer, no longer around, but he was a good dog had a lot of good years. So that was just a little side story. Uh, most of the time when we were out here, we were swan hunting. Ruger would also retrieve the swans. That was pretty pretty sweet and crazy watching those big birds fly over and they're, they're quite tasty as well. Uh, but anyway, it, so I grew up hunting here and didn't realize a lot of the history about this place until I was at a wildlife society meeting. And I heard Harold Pickton, who's giving the keynote speech, told the story about Freeze Out Lake Wildlife Management Area. And I'm like, oh, I've been there. And so I start listening and talking about how it just used to be this kind of cesspool of nasty saline sump water and all the agriculture and all the irrigation from the surrounding area would just drain into this low spot and fill up these lakes. So the water was really gross and thousands of waterfowl and other birds would die every year from avian botulism. It was this nasty water. So eventually what happened is Montana Fish, Wildlife and Parks and the Bureau of Reclamation teamed up to do something about this water. Uh, the breaking point was kind of the water just kept getting too high and it actually took over the railroad and the highway. And so they, they needed to do something about it. So what they did is they created a series of dikes and they put a drain in so they could adjust the water levels. And then they, with all the dikes, they can move the water levels up and down throughout the lakes and they can manage this area for wildlife. And so. Not only that, but then they've adjusted everything on the shores and the banks and they've planted shelter belts and they've done a bunch of habitat management to create nesting cover. And they've also created habitat for deer, small mammals, upland birds, all of that. Wynn Freeman was the guy who spearheaded this whole movement to make this into wildlife habitat. So uh, there's a plaque at the refuge dedicated to him because he was a huge part of getting this thing accomplished. They would just taken this, what used to be kind of a nasty cesspool of saline sump water and turned it into amazing wildlife habitat. And they were able to use the Pittman-Robertson funds, which is the excise taxes on firearms, ammunition, along with hunting and fishing license sales. So they were able to use hunter dollars to make this thing happen. And hunters continue to benefit greatly from it. I mean, I hunted here, a ton of people come here every fall to hunt, super cool spot. So this is a great example of $100 buying wildlife habitat, creating wildlife habitat. The really cool thing about Freeze Out is every year, tons of birds migrate through here. They've said that there could be up to a million birds that utilize Freeze Out every year, which is insane to me. 
but the biggest spectacle of all is the snow geese. There's been up to 300,000 snow geese that have stopped here at one time, which is a lot. That's just insane to think about. Like, there's nothing like it to watch that many birds get up and just create this, like, whoosh sound. And they fly around and then they fly out to the grain fields and go eat for the day and then they come back to the lakes. It's quite the spectacle. If you're not a bird watcher and you're not a hunter, which I feel like are the two main people who are attracted to this place, even if you're not one of them, pretty much anyone would say, that's cool. That's super cool. Like look at these swans flying over my head right now. How cool is that? That's pretty neat. It's super interesting. These birds migrate 2,000 miles from California all the way to the Arctic. This is just a stopover point for them along the way. There are so many snow geese now that they're actually degrading habitat in the Arctic. Uh, a little less so with this population, which we are in the Pacific Flyway, but in the mid-continent, they are hammering their summer grounds in the Arctic. So there's a huge hunting opportunity for them across their flyways. Uh, a lot more so in the, in the mid-continent populations, you can really hammer them. I think they have spring fall seasons in a lot of states. You can shoot a ton of snow geese. Here it's a little more complicated just because there's uh, multiple populations that'll mix in this flyway. And so it's a little harder to target which are the problem birds. But regardless, wherever you're at in the flyway of snow geese, there is an incredible hunting opportunity if you can figure it out. I have yet to figure it out. I'd love to someday. It's fun watching them, but it'd be fun to eat them too. I wanna note that uh, a lot of the information that I just spewed out was just regurgitated from a Montana Outdoors article. So thank you, Bert Gildart and Mark Schlepp. Mark Schlepp is the manager here. They're the ones who actually know all this information. I'm just regurgitating it from a Montana Outdoors article. So thanks. And thanks FWP and hunters for making this awesome place. This is super cool. And there's a lot of LVMAs in Montana amongst other states. They're doing really cool stuff with $100. Yeah, this is one, one example of many. Very cool.